tell you to do is you fucking move. Like, don't like that, then they just won't watch, so it doesn't really matter. You know. 
Let's see. So, okay, uh, Donkey. Deity. <laughs> <laughs> Is, it, is that Irish for David? Yeah. Is David okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Donkey. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. okay. There you go. So, um, I'm going to read your bio first. Um, so, guys, it's Dahi here. <laughs> <laughs> I am a gaming content creator. Uh, if there was a gun to my head and I had to describe myself, I would say I'm goofy and awkward. <laughs> it's a trait that has stuck with me all my life and can get rid of. Thanks to my large Irish family of three brothers and two sisters, I have grown a short temper, which comes across in some of my videos. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Other than that, and the fact that I do YouTube, I am a pretty normal six foot four bill Irish guy that somehow got lucky and is where he is. So, Dahi, you have two million subscribers. Yeah. Which is huge. So, you say that you got lucky. Is that, is that just luck, or do you think there's uh, something else behind? I would put it down majority to luck. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand why. Alright. <laughs> 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 do, do you have a, do you call very specific? I mean, I, I don't, I, I'm actually not a gaming expert. Mm -hmm. But, um, so could you maybe tell us a bit about the kind of gaming content that you create, and if it, is it just like walkthrough? Is it like... Uh, Right, well, yeah, I get what you're saying. Like, there's a lot of different ways to go about it in terms of game. You can be the guy that, you know, hey, if you want to check out a game, see if you want to buy it. You type in the game and it's like, let's play. And you watch the first episode, oh, that's cool. Game, I'll go buy it. Or you can be like, entertaining aspect, which is kind of like how me and Jack go about. Yeah. Which is uh, basically, it's kind of short, snappy. You play it for like, let's say, two hours and you cut it up into the most entertaining parts. Um, or you can be the guy that kind of just has like 20 minutes solid kind of relaxing, so I'm the high energy, I guess. Yeah, energy. Yeah. yeah. It's where your temper comes from. <laughs> yeah, it's most yeah, it's stressful. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, and, and so you said, so you describe yourself as goofy and awkward, but do you think like your YouTube channel helps you to kind of overcome that? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're actually yourself. You're, you're yeah, yourself. it enhances that. A lot of the humor comes from the fact that I'm seen as this, or perceived as kind of a bit dumb. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So I'm fine with that. <laughs> what is this right here? Is that okay? Um, that's an animation made from uh, an animator. <laughs> <laughs> I paid him. <laughs> cool. Okay. <laughs> and finally, we have uh, Sean, um, also known as Jack Safety Guy. No pressure, but he's like the Irish like top number one channel in for numbers of subscribers in, in Ireland, so it's a big, big achievement. So he's 25 year old and he come from Oakley? Oakley. <laughs> originally. <laughs> oh, originally, yeah. I originally started YouTube as a hobby while in college because I like gaming and it suddenly developed into a fully fledged job. I am a college graduate with a degree in hotel management and I have a girlfriend of four years in Korea. Long. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you were going to be reading that out loud. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's fine. It's okay. You said it a million times, Jack. What? You said it a million times. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> they, they know more about so me than I do. <laughs> okay, so it's not a secret, girl. Yeah. Um, so, again, so you also start 3.2 million subscribers as of last night. Um, so, you start, and when I actually. When I asked you to join the panel, you were at, I think, 2.9 million. So yeah. it went up in less than a month, so it's incredible. So, <laughs> so you said you also started as an hobby. Um, yeah. You started back in 2007, is that correct? Well, that's when the actual channel was started, but I didn't start until 2013. So professional. Yeah. And how how did how did you start? Like so, you were just 
pretty much posting the any content out there and you got noticed or you, you think you did something particularly Oh, well, I, I just started posting gaming normally at first, and it was just, it was like twice a week. Like like Melanie said, it was almost the exact same as her. I was in college and I was posting just for fun, and then March of 2013 I decided I was going to post two videos every day, and since then I don't think I've ever missed a day. Like, it, it's been Consistency. Um, so yeah, and then because at, I, I got a shout out from PewDiePie then, who was like everybody knows the one YouTuber. Yeah. And then it kind of, like that got the ball rolling and then the hard work and consistency kind of just kept things going. And just keep, keep the head down and stay going. <laughs> so, a quick question for the, for the gamers. So, just a few years ago, like online gaming was very niche. So, very few people were kind of engaging with the content. Now it's like, Super popular. It's the most popular content out there on YouTube. Yeah. Um, why did you think that changed? Um, is it just about the games? Is it more about you guys being more entertaining? Like, how do? What do you think changed? I think it's it, when you go like certain routes on YouTube. Like some people either have like entertaining videos where they don't show their face. It's like a high production kind of thing, like the Fine Brothers kind of stuff. And then you have the other people who are like the vloggers, who it's all about the person and the topics they're talking about. And then gamers, it's kind of like branching across two different things. So you have you have games that people are interested in, and then they kind of stay for the person. So they kind of come for the game, stay for the person, and you have a, a mix, a mix and match of two different things. So it kind of elevates it above certain other things. Period. Period. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, in terms of game, I think for gaming people, they're very social. That's why. Um, contrary to the typical belief, uh, they're very social. That's why a lot of people want to see online, and they want to see like cool things on YouTube as well, or um, like uh, like one thing that's kind of a, I feel about my channel. And in terms, there's Call of Duty. I'm sure some people know, but basically, my friends and I would play that, and we do things that no one else has ever seen before. In terms of just like doing interesting things, and that brought people in because like. It's shareable because it's different. So, uh, in terms of like, gaming, it's that's where I see the benefit. I don't know if I'm staying on topic or not. But, uh, <laughs> there we go. But yeah, I, I think it's just people are a lot more social and gaming. I think that's me. You know. Can I say as well? It's gaming has become cool recently. Like I remember being a kid, and like everyone just gets lagged if you're into games in school, yeah. and now it's like it's one of the most watched things on YouTube. It's, it's really big. Uh, so, the title of the panel is uh, From Passion to Profession. So, none of you guys now have, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, a full time job other than YouTube. So, when was the kind of turning point? When did you decide, okay, I'm going to drop everything and just do this full time? And uh, yeah, so this is your, your full time job pretty much, right? So, so, when I was coming out of college, I was kind of just about getting enough to not go on the dole. So, I was like, I'm like I'm just about getting as much as the dough, so I might as well just put my all into this. And it gave me way more time then to spend on it. So I was like, right, I'll try and make three videos a week now and make them better. And I'm, I'm still like learning. Well, that's really difficult. <laughs> I'm still learning with all the editing stuff. But I think I just wanted to give it that chance. And I was like, this is the one. I can go be a teacher. Or I can do this. So like that for me was. It, and then you have to like look into other avenues of, of income as well as your views because it's very hard to know what you're going to earn every month which is the only scary thing with it like you can never be certain that you'll get as much the following month so it, it's a bit of an unstable thing going into it and scary but once you keep at it it just keeps going up and up so you don't have to really worry about it then um, for me uh, I didn't go to college on the leaving cert because I didn't get enough points. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, playing games all the time for that? Yeah. <laughs> so, my mother wasn't very happy with that, and I went on the dole, and I saved up for six months on the dole, got YouTube equipment, because I was bored, and I home on the dole, <laughs> and uh, just played video games till 6 a.m. for about a year. Didn't really go anywhere, to be honest. Like, I had a lot of, like, a lot of good friends. Why I say I'm lucky is because uh, I knew people that were in YouTube before I started YouTube. A lot of people started on their own, and they're kind of like, what do I do? And so I had a lot of people that were there from the beginning to help me out. So uh, 
basically, uh, it took about two years, I would say, until my mother finally accepted you to it because of the money. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I went to college. I tried to do YouTube in college at the same time, but it's impossible. It's I'm sure. Really hard. Yeah, yeah. I, I ended up getting my subscribers involved in my thesis because I did my thesis on YouTube as an educational tool because I was like, I want to keep doing it, and I used that as an excuse. So yeah, so you can get around it, but it's hard. Like it's yeah, yeah, really it's hard. pretty tough, especially since I'm up to six a.m. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, essentially, it was it happened during the year of college, and I was just like, you know, I like I'm earning more now than I would if I get the degree. So. Not bragging or anything. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, you should all do YouTube. Hope it goes well for you. Um, for me, it was January of last year was when I started like breaking a threshold of earnings that would be sustainable as a job. But I, I finished out college. It was like the last semester in college was from January to May. So I, I finished and I graduated, and then since then I've been doing it as a job really. So almost a year full time now. It's fantastic. And I mean, the more you guys grow, the more like you get interested, interesting from like from brands. And you know, have you have you been working with brands um, and companies? Like, so I know that Manny, you, you work on, on TV. And do you want to talk a little bit about like your brands and TV experience? Yeah. Maybe? I well, I've only recently started getting paid for TV. Like I did a lot of free stuff for like magazines and a lot loads of free things. And um, because you kind of have to though, to like there's a give and take that you can't just be like. Pay me, do you know what I mean? Like, you have yeah. to kind of do so. But I've worked with like charities and things, literally, if they're doing a campaign, they'll be like, Well, will you have this many consistent viewers? So, like, they, there's a lot of different avenues of money. And if you kind of get to a point, you can approach brands that you really like because you can say, Right, these are my stats, and um, I talk about your stuff anyway. So, it's kind of then they'll be willing to work with you, and that kind of supports you instead of having to bring out merch or you know do Patreon or something like that, but those kind of things are options as well. There's loads of different ways that, that YouTubers support their content if they're not getting enough from their revenue. So there's a lot of different, it, it just, kind of, you just kind of have to look into them and see which one's right for you really. Yeah, just uh, a bit of note on that is that you, when you get to a certain stage, you get flurry, but I'm sure your business yeah. is pretty messy. I don't read them, you can read them on YouTube. Some of them are just, hey, how are you, I'm a big fan, and it's a business yeah. email. <laughs> I, I appreciate it, I love it, I love it. I, I, I check them, but I don't reply, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but like, uh, you know, you just get, you get a lot of stuff into your business and a lot of like, What's the main thing though? Well, apps, is it? Yeah. <laughs> like every second email is can you play your app game or something like that. So it's kind of like, it's a, it's a lot of, you gotta be careful what you do and not to do too much because then you become just like, people are just you're doing it for the money. And you guys yeah. are doing everything on your own? Do you help with, the, do you work with an agent or? Uh, I, I do believe some of agents, but I don't see the point, so I don't. <laughs> Yeah, I just kind of do it myself, like I'm pretty, as Jack's the saying, I'm pretty new to it, so yeah. like, uh, you don't want to be seen as a bit green, so <laughs> uh, you got to be a bit cautious about that stuff, but, um, yeah, that's another way, and then like merchandise is another thing as well, um, that people kind of offer their fans to, to get. So you have your own merchandise, sure. store? Yeah, like shirts is the main thing, as far as I'm concerned, right? Yeah. Um, some, some game companies will come to you and ask you to play their game for a lot of money. Um, more often than not, there are games that need to be paid to play. Um, <laughs> because nobody's going to buy them otherwise or play them otherwise. Um, but we've done stuff before where it's like there are branded deals with the people, but it's usually just for games that you play anyway. So like some games that I play anyway, I'd, I'd, there's like a brand deal involved in it. And then I, I try and stay away from them as much as possible because when people see you as like doing brand deals all the time, getting extra money for your videos, they, they think that you're just in it for the money and you're not doing it genuinely. So I, I just like caution everybody against branded stuff because it, it gets inside your head and after a while and then it becomes like brand deal to brand deal instead of like sustaining yourself. You kind of work, you don't work off your views then, you work off the money that they pay you. Makes sense. Um, Melanie, so you mentioned you're working with Animal UK and uh, Channel 4 as well. Yeah. So like UK TV productions, big pretty much. Um, well, the Animal thing is actually they're moving on to YouTube now. Uh -huh. Like they, they've invested like 30 million because they they want to be the first TV based company to get into YouTube production and um, 
uh, the only reason I'm involved in that is because of Michelle Fan because she sure. was coming here and she just wanted like an Irish uh, YouTuber to bring her around and do a video with her. Yeah, I, saw, so the, just, I yeah. saw your video at Brown Thomas. Yeah, I was really nervous about Mina because she was the first girl to get a billion views on YouTube and I was like, I was just terrified of meeting her but she's actually so normal and <laughs> we ended up clicking even though I didn't think we would and I, that's the only reason I'm getting to do that work now. So things like that, they're just kind of, everything's interlinked and you just don't turn down opportunities. Like if you get an opportunity and even if you're nervous or shy, like just, just push yourself to do it because like you never know what you might turn down there. Because a lot of the things that have led to my channel growing are stuff that I had, had to get people to like just go. Do you know what I mean? Like people have to like encourage me to, to, to just do it, you know? Like Nike <laughs> said. <laughs> In, so it's more like a reinforcing and positive message for Irish creators because I know that uh, some Irish YouTubers think that in order to make it they need to move to the UK or to the US but that's not true so I know that you've been asked to move to London but you said no, I'm Irish, I want to be here so No need, like, because if, yeah, exactly. if a company wants you to work with them, they'll, they'll just fly you. It's not expensive to buy a couple of tickets and fly you over. Do you know what I mean? So it's um, and I think that the better thing would be for us to build our community and make it as close as the UK community because they like have all helped each other grow. Do you know what I mean? And I think that like I've, the people I've met through this this like group on Facebook, like none of us are have anything in common, but it's at YouTube. But that's like like yeah. these. <laughs> But we have so much fun anyway, so that's that's my main focus anyway for like for this year. Hi guys, you're huge, so you're really big in terms of subscribers, and um, I, I'm sure you receive a lot of like comments and likes, and you know like so you, you do a great job by reading people's comment, and I think they're super happy about it, and you get a lot of views. Um, the more you grow as a channel, uh, does it actually get really difficult to stay in touch with all of your subscribers? And what are your strategies to be stay in touch with them? Um, well, for me, the, the main thing is just answering comments every day. Like, when I wake up in the morning, it's always answering comments as soon as I wake up. And then before I go to bed, it's answering comments. So it's like four hours a day spent just talking to people. Like, and then you have Twitter on top of that, and you have Tumblr, Facebook, all those different types of things. So just like talking to people and letting them know that you know they exist. Um, so many people share lots of stories about like difficult times they're going through and like just being there, being a voice that they can listen to and responding to them, just even saying hi to them is enough for them to feel happy because a lot of people when they start off on YouTube, I think every YouTuber starts off answering all their comments and then after a while if they get to a certain size, they kind of just stop because they feel like they can't answer to everybody so they answer to nobody. Mm. Which is like I, I do the opposite thing. I, I still can't answer everybody. It's impossible. Nobody has enough time in the day to do it. But it, that doesn't mean I shouldn't answer anybody at all. Right. Like there's still a lot of people out there who want to talk to you. And being on YouTube is a really good avenue for meeting people and like contacting them directly. And they give you direct feedback as well. So it's kind of like a two-way street. And you, you develop respect then. You develop loyalty with your subscribers. And they're not just numbers sitting on a screen or money in your pocket or anything like that. Yeah. My answer's not going to be as good as Jack's. Um, I'm the guy that stopped replying to comments. <laughs> <laughs> All right. but, but, you know, I replied to him here and there. I, uh, I used to do a lot more, of course, but Jack's make me reply to more. Thanks, Jack. Welcome. <laughs> do you think ever give out to you if, say, they see you replying to someone and they're like, Oh, why did you ignore mine? Do you ever get that? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I get that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, People take it very personally if you don't answer their comments and they, they, they hate them. Yeah, yeah. Which, which is kind of sad because I, I'd love to reply to every single person that comments, but like it's nothing personal. It's just not enough time in the day to do it. Yeah, and you can't even see them. Like, say you get you get a lot of comments in your old videos as well as your new. Yeah. I try and just comment 
reply to people's comments on my newest video, like but on the day or the day after I put it up. But you constantly get ones on your old stuff, and if you like, you'd never be able to. Do you know what I mean? So it's kind of my thing that I'm trying to do is get people onto my Instagram and Twitter because it's easier, way easier to reply to them. But I'm really bad at it. Like I'm like a granny. I don't know how to be like follow me on Twitter without it being really in your face. So that's kind of my obstacle. If anyone can share information on that. Yeah, uh, I think it was that I, I was looking at my comments one time and like within a week I think there was 200,000 comments within like just seven day period and then on top of that you have the 1300 other videos that I've done like oh I get a thousand comments a day each as well so like there's if I, if I don't reply to anybody's comments it's I don't hate you, I, I love you, I just don't have time. <laughs> Um, so you recently been involved in uh, an online sa um, safety campaign. Um, so we have a lot of um, young, very young YouTubers in the room. What, what's your what's your advice for them? For um, I think safety? definitely like well that is when they launch like a safety hub. But I, mean, I know everyone's going to be like, oh, we have to go on to the, the thing. But just look at it because it does summarize everything so well. And when I started, like I was kind of really, I would give out too much information. Like there was one video where someone was like, oh, you, your address is on the envelope. That you, you know, these stupid things like that you have to be so careful about. And if I'm posting something on Twitter or Instagram saying where I am, saying I'm out and about, and I'm just in this place, I'll do it like two hours after I've left just to be safe. Because you kind of have to be really, especially if you're underage, be really, really careful about who you're talking to as well, because you can talk to anyone, like fake accounts and trolling, like we all know the troll, the elusive troll <laughs> in the group, but there, there's just, like you never know who you're actually speaking to, like anyone can set up an account and pretend to be someone they're not, so just be careful. like a mother, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Do you give them any advice? Um, yeah, the same thing as well, like, a lot of people know, like, my real name and, like, my real email address and my, my home address and everything at this stage, which I have never, ever told anybody, but somehow it just gets out online, people find out things. I, somebody sent me a cake one time. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's a good yeah. sign, but it could be bad. I didn't know what was in the cake. Yeah, it was delicious, it didn't kill me. <laughs> Like, I, I didn't tell them where I lived or anything, but they just heard me mention something in a video one time, and I, 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 I vlogged walking down the street one time for two seconds, and there was like a building in the background, and they knew where it was, and they sent me a cake because of that. Which sounds great, but they could have easily sent me something really bad, or they could have showed up at my house or anything, because as many people that love you online, there's just as many people who probably absolutely hate you, and don't want anything to do with you, and they, they wish harm upon you, so... You really do have to be careful, and I just, just like don't put your real information out there all at once. And um, well, unless you want to, unless you have safety guards in place. So, <laughs> so I think one last question before we open uh, for questions to the audience. So, so when I go back home, um, back in Italy, you know, my mom she makes a lot of pasta, but also she asks me, uh, so what do you do at YouTube? Uh, what's your job? Because when, when my friends ask me, I never know, you know, how to explain it to them. And she still doesn't know what I do with YouTube. <laughs> so, how do you guys explain your parents or grandparents uh, what you do on YouTube? My dad looked at me like I was a dragon when I told him what I was first doing, and I, I, I tried to explain to him. I was like, I oh, know people do this, like, and there's loads of people doing that. And he was like, Why would you? Why would anyone watch that? And he was like, I'm not being mean, but like, why would anyone watch that? And I was like, Dad, people watch, like, there's people making a living off gardening and baking and stuff like that on YouTube, like, doing the, the person who earned the most money last year on YouTube opens Disney toys on camera. So, like, you know, there's, there's an audience for everything, and I just try and say, like, I do. Uh, like uh, lifestyle and beauty and that kind of thing, like inner beauty, outer beauty, and I always have a focus on positivity, like being a virtual friend, <coughs> maintain that the one I like doing, and that's what I watch as well. Oh, I'm talking. Right. Um, <laughs> uh, pause the question yet? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So how do you explain your, your oh, job to your best? Right, right. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think that's probably the best reply. Yeah. I think I remember I talked to a taxi driver for half an hour in London and he didn't know what YouTube was and it took me 30 minutes to explain. <laughs> so you can understand the struggle of it. Um, 
the best way and the simplest way is like it's like having your own personal TV channel. Then you quit. That's very good. I'm like, I say that and I leave it. That's the end of the conversation. It's not for you. So yeah, that's, that's my answer. Sorry. <laughs> I just tell people I work at YouTube. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, they, don't, they don't understand. I, I, I tried to explain it to an old lady in Burger King one time. <laughs> people came up to me and they recognized me and they took pictures and everything. And she took out her phone and she was getting her glasses ready and she said, You must be in a boy band or something. <laughs> and these young girls come up to you and I said, Oh no, I do YouTube. And she kind of put the glasses back down. <laughs> I was like, Right, I, I work at YouTube. It sounds way more professional. Like, even when I go to the bank, they're like, like, what, what do you do? Like, we don't understand. Like, you want to set up a company? Like, what are you talking about? So, I, I work at YouTube. <laughs> okay, that's good. So, we're going to open up for questions, guys. Um, so, we have a very interactive way to do this. So, this is a microphone. It's the outdoor microphone. So, we're going to um, throw it around. Please be mindful. Hello. Oh, hi. Hi, guys. Um, What's your name? Barry. Hi, Barry. Hi, Matt. <laughs> uh, well, you can answer this if you want. It's more for so uh, for the guys because they're gaming related. Just want to get your opinion on uh, Nintendo's new program for videos, uh, video content for YouTube. It is. <laughs> and why? It's, it's, it's terrible. It's Nintendo having a clue what the hell is going on in the YouTube space at all. It, it's better than it was. They they were taking a lot more from gamers, and it was really very intrusive to like what we do. But like it's it's still not good. You, like some some games are exempt from it, but some parts of it you have to like sell your soul to Nintendo just to do their games, which is like it's going to mess them up in the long run because a lot of people who were going to do Nintendo stuff, I was going to do Nintendo stuff, and now it's just it's completely out of the picture, and they've really like shot themselves in the foot in that regard because they could have a much broader market. It, YouTube, which are basically free advertising for your game, and they don't re realize that so. I don't know. I, I hope it's not a precedent for what other people are going to do in the future. I can imagine the EA are going to eventually do it as well, which I'm not looking forward to, but no, hate it. <laughs> right, thanks.